Well, we've got one more night of optimization, so I just titled this Optimization 3, and let's dive in. Determine all the points on the curve y equals x squared plus 1 that are closest to the point 0, 2. All right, now it seems like a very simple question. There's not a ton of wording to it, but it's actually a fairly nasty question. If you want to be the closest to something, okay, are you minimizing or maximizing? All right, if I want to be the closest, I would say I'm definitely minimizing. Now, what are we minimizing if we want to be close to something? Well, I'm minimizing the distance between us. All right, so let's get that in our notebook and be very clear that our goal is to minimize the distance between us. So I'm going to first sketch this out. I've got a nice parabola, y equals x squared, just shifted up one. And I have this point zero two, which would fall here then. And the question is, points meaning plural, we could have more than one, determine all the points that are closest to zero two. So are you thinking, you know, we can be fairly obvious, would I be way out here? Is that point closest to zero two? I think you would agree you'd have to fall someplace maybe here or here to be closest to this point. All right, and that's my goal. Where am I going to put this random point? Okay, maybe that's my guesstimate. Where am I going to put this point so that I minimize the distance between these two? All right, so since we know we're minimizing the distance, we have to start with that lovely distance formula. And hopefully you remember that. I've got x minus x1 squared plus y minus y1 squared. Okay, and my goal is to minimize this guy. Now before I can minimize it, this is obviously uh, my primary equation because this is who I want to minimize. I need a secondary equation. And of course that's just going to be this equation that was given. All right, so I'm going to say my distance is and I'm going to use this point 0, 2. Let's just be clear, this is my x and this is my y. I'm going to say this is x minus 0 squared plus y minus 2 squared. All right, so my first move was to just insert this point 0, 2. Now you'll notice I don't have everybody in terms of x or y only. So here's where that secondary comes in. I just need to take this x squared plus 1 and substitute it into y. So I've got my distance equals, uh, so x minus 0, of course, is just x squared, plus, in place of y, I'm going to use that secondary equation, x squared plus 1, and I've got a minus 2 squared. Okay, now I have one formula in terms of x only, and I'm just going to clean it up a tad more. Um, I've got x squared plus, this is really x squared minus 1 squared. Now that I've simplified that equation in terms of x only, we're going to take its derivative. So I need d prime. And just be real careful with your derivative. It's fairly nasty. Clearly, it's a big chain rule. I can get rid of that radical and say it's all of that to the 1 half if that helps. So I'm going to try to write nice and neat here. I got 1 half, leave the inside. All raised to the negative 1 half. Now times, of course, the derivative of the inside, so again, just be real careful. The derivative of x squared is just 2x, plus this guy's derivative is another little chain rule. Bring down the 2, leave the x squared minus 1, raised to the first, then of course times 2x. If you can get through that, the rest of the math is very simple. It's just that one ugly chain rule. Now, as I clean it up, I'm just going to go through and ask myself, who stays on top, who stays on the bottom? Uh, in the 1 half, I'm going to move that 2 to the bottom. I don't need to say times 1 on top. All of this junk has a negative exponent, so that's going to the bottom. And then this stuff I'm just going to clean up. Um, so I've got 2x, and I'm going to clean it up off to the side. I'm going to say the 2 times the 2x makes 4x. All right, and I'm just going to slowly clean up. So I've got 2x plus... 4x times x squared is 4x cubed minus 4x. And again, just cleaning up. Uh, so that gets me a 4x cubed and a minus 2x all over my 2 square root of x squared plus, oops, I think I missed the squared on that term, uh, x squared minus 1 squared. All right. Now, all I'm going to do is once I take that derivative, I've got to set this fraction equal to zero. And remember, when you have a fraction, you have to set both the top and the bottom equal. Okay, the bottom is when the derivative doesn't exist. The top will get you your critical points as well. 
Uh, so I've got two separate pieces, 4x cubed minus 2x equals 0. I can easily pull out a 2x, and I get 2x squared minus 1 equals 0. If I tee that up, I'll get, let's see, x equals 0, and let's see, x squared equals 1 half, so x equals plus or minus radical 1 half. If I set this bottom equal to 0, let's see, I've got 2 square root of x squared plus x squared minus 1 squared equals 0. Uh, I would divide out the 2, so you can imagine that's gone, because 0 divided by 2 is 0. To get rid of a square root, I'm squaring both sides, so 0 squared is 0. So I've got x squared plus this piece that I have to foil out. So that's x squared minus, oops, that's x to the fourth, minus 2x squared plus 1 equals 0. Uh, so that's x to the fourth uh, minus x squared plus 1. And if I try to factor that, uh, you'll obviously see I get nothing here. If I go x squared and x squared, the only options are 1 and 1, and clearly they're never going to add up to 1. So that bottom just gets rejected. So now I've got two answers, and don't forget, you don't know which one's a min or a max until you make your sign chart. So I've got 0, I've got my radical 1 half, and my negative radical 1 half. Uh, this is my d prime, describing my distance. Now, if those numbers freak you out, remember, just try to slow down and think about what they really are. Um, radical 1 over radical 2 is really 1 over radical 2, which is really just radical 2 over 2. And that number is fairly easy to think about. The square root of 2 is, you know, 1 point whatever, 1, 2. Uh, and if I divide that by 2, I clearly get a number bigger than a half. 1.1 something divided by 2 is bigger than a half. So I'm going to test a positive half here and a negative half here. And maybe like a, a 4 here and a negative 4 here. And remember, I'm just plugging them back into the derivative. So I've quickly rewritten my derivative down. And I just want to be clear, on the bottom, I'm squaring this term and squaring this term. So I'm always going to get a positive number on the bottom. So I really just have to worry about the top. If I plug a 4 in, 4 cubed times 4 minus 8 is clearly a positive number. If I plug a negative 4 in, so I'll test one down here, a negative 4 cubed times 4 is a very big negative, plus a number is going to get me a negative number. If I plug in the half, I'm just going to slow down and think about what that means. 4 times 1 half cubed is 1 eighth, minus 2 times a half is 1. Well, that's really 4 eighths minus 1, which is clearly a negative number. And if I plugged in a negative eighth, that would be a positive number. So I can see that this function decreases, increases, decreases, increases. So the question was, if I want to minimize the distance, I have to pick the one that's clearly a min. So my two x values would be plus and minus negative 1 half. Radical negative 1 half. Now if I just scroll back and think about that question in the beginning. All right. I think you would agree that radical 2 over 2, when I rationalize that, would be fairly close to that point. And that was my goal. And I should get two of them because this is symmetric. And I would say there are two points that are closest to that point, 0, 2. Now, it does say points, so I would make sure I go get my y values. Um, if the x value was radical 1 half and the equation is x squared plus 1, obviously it's just radical 1 half squared plus 1. Radical 1 half squared is just 1 half plus 1. So y equals 1 half plus 1, or y equals 3 halves. So I would say that my points, to sum this all up, are radical 1 half comma 3 halves, and negative radical 1 half comma 3 halves. And you found the point that minimizes the distance. All right, so we're going to do one more one very similar. Uh, We'll try to let you do most of it on your own, but here's the question. What point on the graph of y equals x squared is closest to the point 0, 6? So again, I want you just to graph x squared. And if we want to be close to the point 0, 6, which we'll say is here, we are really minimizing, when I see the word closest, we are minimizing our distance. Okay, now where do you think the point is? Take a ballpark answer. I mean, do you think the point 0, 0, do you think that is the closest point? Hopefully you're saying no. I would say the point may be, you know, someplace over here maybe. Um, but clearly I don't think it's zero. Um, but anyways, we'll find the exact point. So let's go ahead and get that distance formula set up. 
So I've got my distance formula. Um, remember they gave us the point 0, 0.06, so that is the point I'm plugging into my x1 and y1. So I've got x minus 0 squared plus y minus 6 squared. And you're halfway there at that point, you still have an x and a y, and you're just going to use that original equation as your secondary. So in place of y, we're just going to substitute an x squared in. So I've got the square root, that's really x squared, plus... This just becomes x squared minus 6 squared. I would say that's a pretty simple step. And again, the only nasty part of this problem is actually taking the derivative. So it's probably fair if you just pause it, try it on your own, and see if it matches mine. And again, that's really the only calculus involved. Pause it, see what you get. So I've got 1 half, uh, let's see, x squared plus x squared minus 6 squared raised to the negative 1 half times the quantity 2x plus 2, x squared minus 6, times that 2x. If you've got that, like I said, you've got the hardest part down, the calculus is out of the way, and I'll quickly just clean this bear up. Uh, let's see, I'm going to put my 2 on the bottom, of course, and this radical of this junk, x squared plus x squared minus 6 squared. And then I'm just going to be careful, I'm going to say this 2 times 2x is really 4x times this x squared minus 6. So I get 2x plus 4x cubed minus 24x. Hopefully you would agree with that. And again, I'll just keep cleaning this puppy up. Uh, let's see, that gets me a 4x cubed minus 22x all over 2 square root of this junk. All right, so again, the calculus part is done. Just set the top equal to 0, set the bottom equal to 0. We'll go get our critical points. If I set that top equal, I get my 4x cubed minus 22x equals 0. I think I can pull out a 2x. So it gives me 2x squared minus 11. T that up. I should get x equals 0. Let's see, x squared equals 11 halves. So x equals plus or minus 11 halves. When I set that bottom equal, uh, very similar to the last question, none of this will factor, so I'm not going to worry about that. And I'm just testing these points. So I've got my d prime. I've got to test a negative 11 halves, a 0, and a positive radical 11 halves. All right, so we'll pick some points in here. Again, if 11 halves freaks you out, 11 divided by 2, 5 and a half. So I'm really taking the square root of 5.5. And I know the square root of 4 is 2, so I know this number is bigger than 2. So 1 is clearly fair game in there. And if, you know, if that number really bothered you, pick something big. Pick like a 10 over here and a negative 10. All right, so I know the bottom is always positive, and I know that because I'm squaring this term. Whoops. I'm squaring this term, and I'm squaring this term, so my denominator is always positive. So I'm really just worried about the top. So let's start with that 10. 10 cubed times 4 minus 220 is definitely a negative. If I plug a 1 in, I think I have to change my mind. I think that's definitely a positive. Sorry about that. Um, if I plug a 1 in, I get 4 minus 22, which is a negative. If I plug a negative 1 in, I get negative 4 plus 22, which is a positive. If I plug my negative 10 in, I get a very big negative minus a positive is a negative. So I think if I draw my arrows in, you would agree where we have some mins and maxes. Notice we said 0 was definitely out, and you'll see that 0 created a max, which is not what we wanted. We wanted mins. So I would say my two mins occur at when x, whoops, when x is negative radical 11 halves and when x is positive radical 11 halves. Now, does it want the point? Probably. At what point on the graph is that true? Well, once you know the x value, you just need to plug it into the y value to get the original. And remember, y is just equal to x squared. So if I just plug that in and square it, I'll get a positive 11 halves and a positive 11 halves. And those are the two points that I would plot to minimize the distance or find what point is closest to the point 0, 6. And again, there should be two because we, are, we do have that symmetric graph and there should be two points that are closest. Well, that does it for us, and we're going to wrap up our optimization on minimizing distance. Um, again, pause, rewind what you need to, and we'll look forward to seeing you in class. Have a great night.